started in Europe during the 18th century with the aim of providing accessible savings products to all level of population. Early banks are often signed to encourage low-income people to save money and to have access to banking services. France claims the credit of being the mother of savings bank. Basing on this claim, on the savings bank said to have been established in 1765 in town of Brumath. But it is of the record that the savings bank idea was suggested in England as early as 1697. There was a savings bank in Hamburg, Germany in 1778 and in Brunswick, Switzerland in 1787. The first English savings bank was established in 1799 and postal savings bank was started in England in 1861. The first chartered savings bank in the United States was the Provident Institution for Saving in town of Boston, incorporated in December 13, 1816. The Philadelphia Savings Fund Society began business the same year, but was not incorporated until 1819. In 1818, banks for savings were incorporated in Baltimore and in Salem, and in 1819 in New York. Hartford, Newport, and Providence. Now, banks are safety deposits of their savings, which banks they pay interest on. Then, as a savings pile up, banks will loan it to different enterprises for growth of their business. Steps for opening a savings account Number 1. Make sure you are eligible for opening a savings account. As a general rule, most banks will require the following. If you're under 18, some banks may require your parents to sign some forms when you make your own savings account. Not all banks do this. So if you don't want your parents to be involved with your banking, try emailing banks before you go into them asking whatever they require your parents to sign. You will need to have valid identification and willing to share some basic information about yourself. You need to have at least minimum amount of money for opening a savings account. Number 2. Choose the bank that's best for you. While all banks are different, they can generally be lumped into two general categories, namely large chain banks and smaller local ones. Large chain banks usually have branches in most towns and cities across the country, which means you'll be able to get basically the same service no matter where you go. This wide coverage can help you avoid fees you'll have to pay for using other bank services like ATM fees, etc. Large banks also usually have the resources to offer services like 24 hours helplines for customers. In addition, these banks tend to have a stable, trusted reputation, they are unlikely to fail or present you with surprise difficulties. Smaller local banks offer a more personal and human experience. They tend to be friendlier than big banks in several ways. Not only will they be willing to offer more personal, one-on-one -on -one attention, but they'll be often willing to work with you. When something goes wrong, like you overdraft your account. Smaller banks usually charge a smaller fee for using their services. On the other hand, smaller banks fail frequently than larger banks. Number 3. Visit your bank and ask to open a savings account. Opening a savings account in person is usually the best option for the first-time account holder. One big advantage of opening a savings account in person is that you can ask the teller all of your questions and get immediate answer. Number 4. Ask important questions before you finalize your savings account. For example, Is there a monthly fee for maintaining this account? If so, what is it? Is there a minimum balance that I must keep within this account? If so, what is it? What sort of fees apply if I undergo that limit? Is the interest rate of my savings account? How often does interest generate? Is there a limit to the amount of transactions? 
Where I can withdraw cash without paying any fees? What is the fee for using an ATM that doesn't belong to this bank? Number 5. Supply the necessary information to create your own savings account. For example, have a government issued ID with your photo on it, like driver's license or a passport are the best. Proof of address, a phone bill, driver's license, or any other official document with your name and address will usually do. Proof you are registered citizen. The bank will ask for your security number, task identification number, or employer identification number to ensure that you are on the record with the government. Number 6. Keep the savings account documents you receive secure, like your 4-digit PIN number. You need this to use your debit card for purchases. Your bank account number. You need this for the financial task like setting up direct deposits. Many say that the lack of money is the root of all evil. That's why we all must have the prior knowledge in handling our money. Can you imagine it if we don't have this knowledge? What will be the outcome? Because of this dilemma, savings banks were invented. It originated in Europe. During the 18th century, with the aim of providing easily accessible savings products to all strata of the population. Savings banks were created on public initiative, while in others, socially committed individuals created foundations to put in place the necessary infrastructure. The purpose of saving money First, to prepare for the future. Second, to prepare for the emergencies but it's not all about the month. Now, these answers are good. It's good to be prepared. It's good to be prepared for emergencies. But here's what we believe. Saving money is never about the money. Rather, it's about foregoing the ordinary for the extraordinary. The History of East West Savings Bank Established on July 6, 1944, East West Bank was the first recipient of a commercial banking license after the Central Monetary Authority liberalized banking in the mid-1990s. Its first branch was opened along Sen Hill Puyat Avenue in Makati City on August 1, 1944. Its name is the result of the bank's desire to combine the traditional prudence, warmth, and hospitality of the East and the efficiency and progressive thinking of the West. Since then, East West Bank has made its presence known in the banking industry through steady growth. The bank offered products, services via traditional and alternative delivery channels and made banking accessible and convenient for its clients. It later introduced internet banking facility to expand delivery channels for its products and services. East West is a subsidiary of the Field Invest Development Corporation or FDC, one of the country's leading conglomerates with interest in banking, real estate, hospitality, tourism, power generation, and sugar. Number 1. Basic Savings The basic savings the most affordable interest earning savings account offered by the East West Savings Bank, with the initial deposit required of only 100 and a required balance of only 500 to, er to earn interest. 2. Kidding Savings The Kidding Savings account is an interest earning peso savings deposit account for children ages 0 to 18 that, ev that is evidenced by the passbook. Number 3. Passbook Savings Account the Passbook Savings Account is an interest-bearing peso deposit account. This account allows a client to deposit with a withdrawal fund anytime by presenting a passbook. Number 4. Regular Savings with Debit Card The Regular Savings Account is a savings account evidenced by a debit card. Number 5. Super Saver 
Super Saver is a saving of deposit account that pays interest in increasingly higher amounts as the account balance increases. Plus, you get a bonus interest of 0.75% per annum if there are zero withdrawals. Number 6. Passbook Saving Account with Debit Card An interest saving deposit account that has both a passbook and debit card, allowing customer to have their transactions documented in a passbook while enjoying the advantages and convenience of modern banking. The Future Plans of East-West Savings Bank The future plans of the bank focuses on its main objective would be first in features when it comes to salary loan, be first in compliance to clients in small-scale loans, to cater them lowest interest rate with no hidden charges and at the same time to enhance more stability to be able to compete on time. The New Innovation of East-West Savings Bank The new innovation of our bank is more likely on people's management because more likely savings bank cater same products to clients. So we, here in this bank, will going to develop our people to be more competitive in terms of transparency because we also want them to become a productive future leaders. Conclusion Savings bank help us control and secure when it comes to saving money by having a savings account. The most affordable interest saving money like what East West Bank is offering. We have 100 peso deposit requirement and a 500 required balance to earn interest. You can now have your own savings account. Its savings and production makes the economy grow, not consumption and spending. Here's a fact. Society wouldn't become wealthy if everyone just ran out and bought boats and houses and cars. If that is true, the larger everyone make their credit card debt, the wealthier they be. Something seems fishy. Think about it this way. A healthy economy is made up with goods and services people want. If you want to understand why some economies have a lot of goods and others few, we have just to ask how does the amount of goods in an economy grow? One word. Production. Let's look at a family farm. How much food they produce depends on how much they work. The total amount of food increases when they eat their total amount of food shrinks. This consumption isn't a bad thing. It's really the whole point of working in the first place. They want to sustain themselves. Their production must outpace their consumption. What if they decided to build a plow to help increase the growth and activity? With the plow, he could produce twice as much the half a time. Well, plow just don't pop out of thin air. It takes time to make them and while it's being constructed, these workers won't be producing any food, just consuming. That means that they have to save enough food to eat. When they work without those savings, there is no way for them to take time to build a plow. They will run out of food. Once it's finished, they can produce more efficiently and the total amount of food will grow. On top of that, because they no longer have to worry about starving, time is freed up. They can choose to produce other goods or services or just relax and enjoy their free time. And this is what happens in the large-scale economy. Factories and bulldozers don't just pop off of thin air either. They have to be constructed with a full of savings as well. Here's how it works. In a free market, where people save their money and don't spend it, capital piles up of banks. It turns its money if a lender to entrepreneurs who use it to purchase or create equipment which expand their business and increase their level of production. And get this, the more goods are being produced, the more savings become available. As this pile of savings grow even more larger, loans become available to the entrepreneurs. This makes an economy grow exponentially. All of this is made possible only by savings. Without it, there would be any capital available to borrow and economy expansion would come to a halt. An economy based on consumption and not production can only last until there are no goods to consume. Just remember 
Saving money comes with a great responsibility and we should always put in our mind what is the purpose and what are we saving for to reach our goals.